guys, how are you doing? Here I am with the next in the Musings video series, which today is on how to follow your intuition. So I get asked this question all of the time. So I'm just going to dive right in there and tell you how I think um, we need to approach it. You know that I um, read cards and things like that, um, but I'm not special. There's nothing special about me being able to do that. Everyone can hear um, in their own way and channel their information from their intuition, from their higher self, from source, whatever. So how can you? You need to keep the channel clear, okay? So it's like a relationship. It's like, um, I see it as almost like a pipe, you know? It's like a pipe from your higher self, your intuition, whatever you want to call it, to you here in the physical 3D, okay to your mind if you like because obviously that's where you compute the information so you've got like a pipe going this isn't literal well clearly it's not literal but you know what i mean as in it's not su such a physical thing but it's just easy if we imagine like here is our physical self here is our higher self and here is like a pipe going between them you've got to keep that clear and you've got to keep that open you've also got to know like what that intuition feels like you know so <clears throat> so one of the things that i think is really important a lot of the time you are receiving information from your intuition you just don't recognize it you don't know it so the first thing kind of i would suggest is that you become really really aware of being uh, like looking out for your intuitive nudges so say if you go to do something and you think mm, i'm not sure about that and you think oh that's a nudge Car again carry a little notebook probably want a smaller one than this around with you and just write it down you know like i felt a bit funny about this or you know and be aware of the sensation in your body because different people or the picture in your mind or whatever some people feel it some people hear it some people see it you know and it's going to be different for you than it is for me or anybody else that you speak to so basically when you think oh is that my intuition the chances are it is yeah it's a lot of time we overcomplicate it if you think it's your intuition it probably is okay because it's that simple but write them down so start writing down what you think are your intuitive nudges and then you will notice over time oh yeah i was right about that oh yeah i was right about that and then you can look back and see oh hang on whenever i got that weird feeling here or whenever i got that tingle there i was right and then you can use that to guide you in the future okay but there are some i've got five specific points so other than actually just noticing what you already know or what you already think is your intuition and like trying to sort of find out for yourself whether it is your intuition or not other than that the five points that i've got to actually like how to hear it if you think i don't know i don't hear my intuition release it number one this sounds really really weird and probably not what you would expect excuse me a moment i'm just watching freya's mountaineering on a load of stuff in the corner right near one of the lights so i'm just hoping she doesn't knock it over if there's a really big crash you'll know why so the first one like i say is not what you would expect it's to keep a to-do list okay so i don't mean about anything to do with um your intuition as in like i need to go to the shop and buy that I need to do this that and the other so in your diary in a notebook keep a to-do list that sounds so weird probably but it's kind of obvious if you think about it if you are really active in your mind you are not in stillness you're not quiet your intuition you have to be receptive if your mind is going like crazy and you're think 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 thinking all of the time you can't hear your intuition so what i do is i try and have a blank mind some of you will laugh at this and say we know that cat <laughs> i try and have a blank mind as much as i can all right um so if i think oh gosh today i need to do this 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 and this i don't keep it all in my mind i literally have my diary and i just write it down so I don't need to carry anything in my head whatsoever, you know, and that helps so, so much. I've just realized that I've shown you a blank page of my book and now I've lost where I am. Oh, okay, it's there. <laughs> oh dear. 
Yeah, so keep a to-do list because then you are not thinking, overthinking. And there's more time when you've got that space for intuition to come through, okay? Number two is sleep well, okay? And I know some people really struggle to sleep really well, um, but you do everything that you can to get a good night's sleep. You know, um, and I'm not going to talk about how here, but I think it's absolutely crucial. If you are tired, you just are not a good channel for hearing your intuition. Number three is meditate every day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, however much you can manage. OK, because this quietens your mind, which again allows your intuition to come forwards. OK, number four, breath, your breath, breathing. Okay, now this sounds like absolutely bonkers. We're always breathing, but to breathe well, properly, to take deep breaths. So, um, if we're stressed, if we're very in our minds, if we're rushing around, it's to take three conscious breaths. I do this all the time. So, in through the nose, and really expanding your lungs into the belly, a really deep breath. And then you can either blow it out through your mouth or out through your nose. I prefer to do it in through the nose and out through the nose when I'm doing my three conscious breaths. Just three deep breaths. It just helps to quiet yourself, center yourself, you know, and, and that helps. Because basically your intuition is always talking to you, always. But you hear it, feel it. I'm going to use the term hear it because that's what we tend to refer to it as. But you might feel it. You might see something, you know, um, but how we hear it is when we hear it, sorry, is when we are quiet. You know, you need to be able to be in that spaciousness. OK, so the last point, fifth point, the obvious point is to slow down and quieten down. So like, for example, everybody loves a good sing. I do as much as the next person. So, and it, it's very helpful um, for relaxing you, etc. So say, for example, you know, say if you were washing up and you were singing, you had the music on loud and you were dancing around a bit, that's fantastic. That's absolutely great. But maybe try now and again, just being really quiet, you know, breathing quietly, you know, and just being very aware, you know, bringing your awareness back into your body and just being really still. And really gentle and really quiet. I find as well, you know, like when I'm doing, say, jobs, it's very um, tempting nowadays, I think, to kind of rush, to rush around and to be kind of quite frantic. So to just actually almost imagine yourself going in slow motion and to just slow things down, quieten things down. And you will find, if you follow those five steps and keep a log of your intuitive nudges, you will find that you become more and more aware of your intuition. Understand that you are not, you already have your intuition there. It's already there. It's already happening all the time. You can always tap into it. We're just talking about how to improve that flow um, because it, it, it's just a case of knowing what it is. Because I think you'll find that once you do tap into it and you do start to be, uh, become familiar with it, you'll go, oh, yeah, you know, it was, you know, you'll realize it was there all the time. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful. So much love to you. Mwah!